Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. End of the month tour. Wow, can you believe it? It's already the end of May? Oh my goodness, I don't want it to go so fast. Why don't the winters go by so quickly? Oof. Anyway, the table is pretty busy and I will do a separate video of that because I've got all my big orchids now on a silicon soak schedule. So that's why they're out here on the table and are full of silicon to give them a little bit of a boost. Most of them are in active growth, new growths everywhere, but that will be a video for tomorrow because yeah, there's a lot going on. I don't want to make this too long. But the lower side here, the slower shelf, I have not got silicon in these because they are, well, except for the Demophorcus lowii there in the middle, because they're not really growing actively at the moment and I'm not going to stuff any kind of supplements into them as they don't need it. I'm gonna do an update on all my catacetinae, but here we have the dendrobiums that I put into lava and self-watering. Uh, the gyrac horn isn't doing anything. I can see a little bit of a bulge down there, so I'm hopeful it'll start getting active soon. But here, the little sutkinoi, that growth is coming along nicely. And then I have some hibiki keikis in the back there. But let's go to the deep south, check out some of the rapiculus lalias just to see how they're doing and go to the blooming alley because that's what this is about this video and the other one will come tomorrow. Rapiculus lalia staging area. Sorry if you can hear the wind on the mic. This is my little setup here. I have them a little bit in the shade even though it's kind of a hazy day today but they know not all of them can take what's coming if the haze goes away and suddenly the sun gets a little bit more clear then we have a problem. But what I've got up here still in the shade is the Bayensis because the Akadama is staying very wet for quite some time. So I want more aeration around that one, even though it's just new to my collection. But every single Rapiculus Lelia is growing new growths and I need to do a separate video on them to show you. The Regina is not growing new growths. That's the one in the corner back there, far left. That one isn't growing any new growth that I can see, but we'll have to get them all out and have a look at them separately. Very, very pleased. Since King decided he needed a Sangilobia, I'm going to have to put a mesh around this table because I need to be spreading them out a little bit more. I need to put some kind of protective mesh wiring around this so that I don't have any more of those accidents that he thinks he can have that orchid and not me. Very, very disappointing and I'm kind of living in fear since then, putting my plants onto the lower shelf, even in the back there, all the way to the back. It's all very, very disturbing at the moment. Very nervous about my Rapiculus Lelius and King, who is right here. Yeah. Let's go to the Angracoids. I have to check the leaves before I continue, make sure that they're okay. You can see that a little bit of sun got here. They're very quickly to show you that they're getting too much light. You see that? It's the bossery. But they're doing okay here, with the exception of my Plectromynthus caudatus that is now objecting to the dry air. As you can see, I have to get my umbrella out and get this one into the shade. The dry air is causing the leaves, the cells to collapse. I have figured that out over the years. So I'm misting it regularly, but it's not enough for this very, very high humidity loving orchid. A shame, but I hope that I can keep up and that the growth speeds up a little bit wishful thinking, but yeah, the leaf drop shouldn't be faster than the new growth. Otherwise, Dactromanthus caudatus is no longer in my collection. Kimmy is doing fantastic, growing another side shoot right here. So this is where I cut it. 
This is where it grew one branch and it's growing another one here. Incredible, good stuff. Very happy with Kimmy. Still need to work with Garen Weaver here. Oh, goodness me, Nina, Nina. But these guys back here are doing well. Check out this new root coming here. That makes me very happy. I hope that's in focus, weird angle. The branching of the roots going into the hedge hasn't started yet. Only the ones that were very close to the stem of the orchid have started to branch and are extending now. But the really long roots, I don't see any activity on any of the two and grecoids that tells me that they're branching. Oh well, they're still functional, we can do that. I'm still waiting for Peggy Ruth Carpenter to start with her roots. Her new growths are coming on a treat, but I don't see any new roots yet. So I'm not going to be disturbing her and dividing her just yet. You can see how the pseudobulbs are desiccating. That is a trait of this orchid. There could be issues in the pot with the old roots. That happens, but they will plump up as soon as the new roots start to get active again. I'm still waiting. Probably gonna take another six weeks, maybe. Those growths need to double in size before the roots start. So there's that. My Peggy Ruth Carpenter is on standby. Jomelia is doing amazing. This is Jomelia arborescens. Doing amazing. What a little rock star here in this corner. And I think I'm seeing spikes. Not quite sure if, my, if I'm imagining things. I don't want to look too closely because I think I already lost one spike, but there's something growing in the nodes there. Nodes, aha, plural. I know, you see here, I lost a leaf, probably a bird or something, and there was a spike in here as well. And that is why I'm not counting my chickens or my spikes until I see more. But what a little rock star. Loving, loving this so much. All right, I'm gonna go now to the blooming alley. The spike of my supposed Vanda Denisoniana is coming along really nicely. I am liking the little white tongues that are sticking out already from the buds. So I am hoping that this is actually a Denisoniana. That would be three years of waiting for a confirmation. Sorry about that breeze. But that is looking promising and I keep blasting it with some water, well, gently blasting it in order to keep the ants in check because there are lots of ants interested in that spike, but I think I deserve them more. My beautiful Dendrobium sorola bursting with blooms. So pretty. Absolutely no fragrance, but my goodness. This is amazing. You see, I have ants all over this mount. Oh, now they've gone into hiding. But even along the canes that are not blooming anymore from the Dendrobium of Philum, never ever in three years of growing orchids here have I seen so many ants. <sighs> These are gorgeous. Look at all of them. Such, such a giver. Dendrobium saraula. All right, let's focus on the blooming alley. It's looking a bit sparse, isn't it? Considering what happened here four weeks ago, it does look a little bit empty, I have to admit. But there are some gems around still. So let's have a look see. The nobly is going over slowly but surely. I've already been cutting off quite a few of the dead blooms. But here we are, just making sure that it is still pest free. Yesterday I sprayed it again with some garlic alcohol just to make sure that my new growths, which are looking lush, are going to stay that way. And then let's look up slowly. The Anopsis Popcorn Haruri is going absolutely mad on its mount. This one is loving the hybrid of a Michael and Ninja mount. I'm hoping for nice bloom spikes, maybe two, maybe three, who knows. But this setup has worked perfectly for it. 
next to it, we were going to find out if this is another variety of Dendrobium unicum. Because the Dendrobium unicum that I know to be unicum, here we are. Ah, look at that orange. These blooms are lasting twice as long so far than the blooms last year with the broken cane. But yes, look at that orange. Beautiful fragrance, like the sugar-coated candy jellies that you get for Christmas, the orange one. Delicious, not very obvious, but it's there. Love that color, and it is true on the camera as to what it is in real life. Beautiful. So yeah, that was also sold to me as a unicum. The growth is coming along really well. The second growth is now kicking into action. We also have roots coming out. This is all happening at once. And we have buds. Look at that. We'll find out if these are hopefully unicum, another variety, or what these are going to be. I hope they're not keikis. <laughs> been waiting quite some time. Anyway, the anosmum buds taking their sweet time as anosmums do, but they're still there, which is great. And the new growth is coming along slowly but surely with another ant on its way up. But here, check this out. Ta-da! Now, check this out. Ta-da! Unicum and Victoria Regina next to each other. I mean, aren't these colors amazing? They really, really complement each other on the color palette, I think. Oh, beautiful. So the last bloom has just opened. We've got an update coming on this one, a Care Collab update, of course. And thank you everybody who's going to join in on that one because mine is in bloom and I want to show you in more detail. Polyanthum, Dendrobium polyanthum. I have one sign of a bud coming right there. I'm hoping for more, but this one should be nice. Little white bloom with some fragrance of licorice. No new growth yet. Oh, there's another bud. There we are. Perfect. So that makes two. Maybe it'll give me three. That'd be great, you know? We always like to see more. Is this one swelling here as well? Sorry for the jiggle. Yep, that one's swelling. That one's gonna swell, I think. Oh well, at least two. That's great. And Exile is also doing really, really well. Has found its mojo on this Michael Mount. Thank goodness, it is now starting to push out new roots. So it's go time for Exile. Finally, just to stay on that mount for indefinite, indefinite time. I'm not moving it at all. And I want to show you what I talk about ants. Check out this seed pod on my leopard yawn. Covered. I hope that is in focus to some degree, but covered in ants. And I'm getting so tired of it. I'm not sure that they're doing that seed pod any harm, but still getting quite tired of it. I've got rainbow forest hanging around up here. Really, really proactive on the root front as well now, which is great. Hoping to see some blooms. And I'm pointing way up, so forgive me again. And here's the loose neary blue that is absolutely going nuts on the root front. No seaweed, no fertilizer, just plain RO water and we shall see if we're going to get that funky growth of the spikes out of its system. But with no calcium magnesium and no seaweed, look at all those roots coming. It's all around the orchid, everywhere. And let's go down. My arm is getting tired. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Yabiki here to the left. Also got a Care Collab update coming on this one. Starting to grow roots. Woohoo! Chilleriana there in the corner, starting to extend roots, which is great because that means there's more happening in the pot and I'm getting a new growth. Very hard to see. I'm going to try and zoom in on editing, but there's a new growth coming, which tells me that another growth point will start another new growth. 
so happy to see that. Here is Brassavola tuberculata or Subulifolium. Long lasting bloom this year. It's been open for six weeks already. It's wonderful. And then got Roy Tokonaga also starting more roots on the growths, which is important because yes, I left myself one spike to enjoy, but imagine if I had nine more spikes on this orchid with canes looking a little bit desiccated. That wouldn't be good because they would still be in bloom, as you can see on this one. I left myself one as a treat. All my little seedlings here are active. Here's the little Cattleya Maxima that we recently saw, now pushing out roots. That is the Leopoldii cross we also recently saw. It's starting a new growth. I know it's very difficult to see, but it's so slow. So there's a new growth in there, which is fabulous. And Lelia crispa, finally, that one root that is very important to me is going down into the moss. Skinnery, Lodigesia across with Skinnery here. Yep, you see all those ants on the new growths? Yeah, I washed them off as well. New roots coming, good for her. My magic wand here has as yet to kick start into action. Hang on a second, correction. Correction. It has kick started into action already. I see it now. Hey, hey. I hope you can see that. Right there is a new growth coming, pointing in that direction there. Right there. Whoops, that's awesome. And then Kyoguchi Happy Field is starting to kickstart into action with a new growth as well, right there. So they're all doing really well. And over here, did I, wait, did I call this one magic wand? Oh, Nina. Atro Walker, duh. So that's Atro Walker. My magic wand is over here. Also with a beautiful new growth coming and ants on the new growth. Grrr. So everybody here, all the little Cattleyas, are in full new growth mode. Fabulous, love it. Lobata we saw recently is throwing out roots now, like there's no tomorrow, even after the repot, which is great because that climate is perfect now for the next couple of years. Still got my Eclandier. It's not doing very well, it's not very happy, but I'm going to wait. I'm gonna sit this one through and see how it does. Here's the Epidendrum Embraee crossed with Capricorn New that we repotted. That new growth is extending beautifully. It's picking up in size. Luminosa, and here is the Colarthrum Baikonutum. Two buds forming, can you believe it? After all this time. <laughs> we wait and we hope. Cattleya Rex, one of the pieces up here, also starting a new growth. Very, very slow to pick up after we cleaned it from scale and gave it a good fungicide bath, but it's not dead. We've got a new growth coming. The other piece of the loose neary also very active on the root front. No calcium, no magnesium, no seaweed, nothing. Roots are growing really, really well. So probably detox at this point in time, and it's still doing well. I hope, anyway. Um, where else, where else can we go? Oh yes, let me show you down here. The back of my Guariante guatemalensis. You see all those ants? All right, now, this is the kind of ant activity that doesn't bother me, okay? I don't like it. It, you know, there's black blotches on the end of my blooms. But they're not bringing aphids. They're harvesting the happy sap, the nectar, which, okay, I can live with that. But there are two or three ants per stem on the spikes. It just is very annoying. And because of what happened to my fires, it's kind of disconcerting. So I'm gonna get up, turn her around, we can look at the blooms. That's better, my goodness. So she is long lasting 
The first time she bloomed for me, she only lasted about 10 days, if any, 12 days. But now that she is established and acclimated in my climate, she is actually very long lasting. And I've got the most beautiful rose fragrance here in my blooming alley. These blooms have been open for absolutely ages. I can see one fading in the back here somewhere, but my goodness, what a show for such a long time. Yes, now I'm really pleased I got her because her size is just massive space hog. And for 10 days or 12 days of blooms, mm, yeah, I would have to reconsider, but nope. These have now been open for easily six weeks, easily. And she's growing new growths already. I got one new growth right there. And there's another new growth around the corner right there. And I love the positioning in the pot. Let me turn her around again, you can see. So after repositioning this one, this orchid, putting her into a bigger size pot, I've got the growth with plenty of space and then possibly the subsequent growth. So two years, we should be okay. My Roebling here on the right is growing a massive, beautiful new growth to the right there. You can see it as it peeks there through the leaves. And the second growth is chugging along as well. I've still got the seed pod on my Maxima. And I'm getting new growths on the Maxima as well. Two are coming from these two leads. These two leads here, this one and this one, are starting on growth. Maybe the third lead will pick up eventually, but for now I've got the two leads starting, which is great. And ants on the new growth. <sighs> oh yes, and here will be more updates because I've got Renanthera monachica in bloom. I would like to turn her properly without breaking anything. But we'll see her up close and personal much, much better in a future video. And Zobinikofer Humbertiana is still tugging along in the orchid top, performing better than it ever did before. And I'm just hoping that the roots that were on the other side are still active because I hardly move this orchid. I want it just to settle and get established. And at this point, I can't see much, but I can see by the leaves, she is not in stress at all since being outside. And then here is Velotina. We can see how the roots are now nice and long. And I can be covering up those roots with small lecker because they are now in the pot. My tenuis is starting a new growth. There. Porfin, very tiny little orchid still, but there's that new growth, very happy to see that. And in the back here, my Ascacentrum Christensonianum is no more. Self-watering, a massive fail. My Trichocentrum though, still has that one growth. And trust me, based on the position that I'm at, I don't want to turn her upside down for fear of doing something clumsy. I can't see the growth that we saw previously underneath, so that's probably dried out. So I've got one goodbye orchid over there, Ascacentrum Christensonianum. I won't be replacing that one. It was a misjudgment of my competency to even try to cultivate it here in my climate. Shout out Care Collab for Twinkles. Leave me a comment, please, if you would like to join in. Twinkle Care Collab shout out. I would love to do a video on those. I have lots to say. <laughs> All right, and then in the middle here, I've got my Citrina coming into bloom. Ooh, what a spike this one is. Best ever, including ants. <gasps> but look at those. No fragrance that I can detect, but then I don't want to inhale an ant video coming up on Citrina as well. Renantanda Sunrise, still waiting to figure out the fine balance between blooming, not singeing the leaves, but it's doing well. Finally, I've also got roots going straight into the pot, no issues, no headaches. And the same here 
with my little Kresnitsia green light. Look at that. All these roots are new, going straight into the pot. Rock and roll. Established. Two years. Huh. I've had it for three, but it's taken two years to actually start getting established. One year of Le Salk and Leodora's sweet memory. One bloom already fell off and we are now in the works for all the other buds to start opening. And the fragrance is divine, needless to say, divine lemon powder gorgeousness. Very intense. Pièce de résistance. Look who's coming into bloom. Esaikiana. My ripiculous lalia, Esaikiana. Two spikes, two blooms on each spike. Darwinara blue is also settling beautifully. Same as the green light. In two years now, it has settled in one year of the complete salt. I'm protecting those roots. If my Darwinara blue does not bloom this year, I don't mind. I need those roots in the pot and not to dry out on the surface. And the same with Ascocentrum here is now in position and the wall gets sprayed regularly to keep that humidity up and around it. I don't have any active signs of root growth, but she is really drinking up the water now. Every time I water her down and wet the roots, they are chock a block. You can see how the color changes really fast. So cool. Here is Cernua. I am not seeing any stress yet. Don't say that, Luna. No stress. I've got some roots that are extending down into the media. And why am I whispering? Hmm. <laughs> oh well. Let me come up very slowly. After the radical division, my golden peacock here is getting another spike while this one has just faded, also lasted forever. But you can see the growth despite being the same length on Pseudobulb. It's a little bit weaker, but yeah, that one was taken through the ringer and getting it divided. But I've got another new growth coming there. So the orchid is chugging along really nicely. And there's a bit of silicon in her as well, as I had some spare. I wasn't going to put her over on the east side table because I don't want to lose the buds here. So a bit of silicon here to give her a bit of a pump up. Oh, yes, my nobly has silicon in it as well. I see that now. Very wet. I got to remember to remove that. <laughs> yeah, especially with the bugs that come at it. If I can pump some silicon in there, maybe if, they, if it does want to get attacked, they will turn away quickly because the leaves are much tougher than they originally looked at. Let me see if I've missed... Oh, yeah, my goodness. <laughs> Lady Chateladay. Actually, corner survey variety Chateladay. Here we go. The first two buds are really, really coloring up now. And it's growing a new leaf. But other than that... Oh, maybe one more thing. Hang on a second. We haven't even... Oh, so sorry. Ah, uh, yes. All my summer bloomers are down here. And I'm waiting for giraffe. My goodness, all these extended spikes and new spikes. I want my giraffe to bloom. Sorry about the dust. It's just the nature of the outdoor growing. Tabasco Tex, really going to be beautiful again. And other than that, all the guys back there are just hanging on. Nothing special. And you can see the drops there because now I go around with the mister and I just miss them heavily in the morning and then let them dry out. And the same down here with my Pinkton Bronze Age, who has not bloomed for me in two years, but hasn't absorbed the spike. Oh well, whatever, you do you. You do you, boo. That leaf though is growing nicely, much better. It stopped during the winter, but I'm getting now another nice sizable leaf. I have a gardener now starting in the background, so I'm not going to go shouting above him and his equipment. Quick tour of my deep south, my blooming alley. I want to say thank you very, very much for your time. Ta-da! <laughs> 
before we went to the blooming alley, I put up the umbrella of sun to protect the deep south from the afternoon sun. Again, it's just not that hot. We have a haze, but still, best friends forever. And that also includes all of you. I'm not talking just about my orchids, but all of you. Thank you everybody so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. You are all awesome. Best friends forever. Have a wonderful day. Take care and stay safe. Bye.